Last time I assembled this CNC machine and now I'm finally gonna test it out. But first I'm gonna tell you what it is for, because I didn't quite explain it in my last video. Now it would probably be a good idea to explain what I'm actually gonna use this for. Well, 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 well. So what was this special material in my last video? It was a piece of cloth, because I hadn't made the special part yet which was supposed to be artificial gecko skin. It is a strange material which can stick to completely flat surfaces. It can be used to create robotic grippers or even wall climbing robots. And it works by imitating real life geckos. They can stick to completely flat surfaces because of something called Van der Waals force. Imagine you have two neutral atoms close to each other. The atom might be neutral overall but as the electrons orbit, there might be more of them on one side of the atom and so that side is negatively charged while the other one is positive. This imbalance of charges also induces a charge in the second atom which makes them attract. We usually don't experience Van der Waals force because surfaces generally aren't flat so the atoms don't get close enough to each other. But geckos have this fine structure on their feet which fills out any bumps and provides them with a high contact area. As a result, the Van der Waals force takes effect and they stick to the wall. We can imitate the gecko's skin and make this sharp wedge structure. As the wedge is bent over, the artificial gecko skin sticks to the surface, imitating the gecko. The process of making it is also simple in principle. A block of wax is used as the base for a mold, and then a razor blade is repeatedly pressed into the block creating wedge-shaped indents. A silicone polymer is poured into the mold and a backing material is attached. The adhesive is cured and ready to go. And that's what it looks like. I wanted to make this material ever since I saw this very testing video. And I figured it would help me gain some experience to build a CNC mill in the future. Now that you know the purpose of this CNC, let's try it out. To make the gecko skin pattern, the tool needs to drive into the wax at an angle so I coded a function that does linear interpolation between two points and I decided to test it on a piece of cardboard. The code worked. I also tested a toolpath for making the gecko skin, which would have been too small to see, so I scaled it up. The next step was to make a block of wax and machine it, which is when the good luck ran out. The wax spilled, the mold bulged out, I couldn't take the wax out of the mold, and I even cut my finger while installing the razor blade because I pressed on its edge. Not the best start, but I was enthusiastic when I started facing the top side of the workpiece. Until this happened. Turns out wax is quite slippy, and because of the wise orientation, the block of wax was constantly slipping out of the wise. I can't find a way to clamp the block of wax, so I'm probably gonna have to redesign the wise. And it also makes a lot of mess. It's been a long time since I last worked on this CNC machine. I was busy editing the Hexipod video, so all the clips you saw are two months old. The biggest problem was obviously the wise, so I redesigned it. I added this pattern to the jaws, so the workpiece won't slip as much. There was also a problem with the wax getting into the lead screw and the bearings. And this isn't that big of a problem because it actually provides some lubrication, but it was annoying to clean. So I want to add this plastic sheet under the wax, which is gonna be attached at the back. And I also printed these supports, which are gonna hold the sheet at the front, so it will catch all the wax. I've also designed this new mold, which should make it easy to take out the wax and it also shouldn't spill. At first I attached the sheet under the vise and then I bolted the two supports at the front. Alright, the card is at the front limit position so I can tape the sheet to the back side and then I'm gonna move the card all the way to the back and only then I'm gonna tape the front side. Yeah, this works. I know it looks like shit, but it was a last minute add-on and it's better than nothing because most of the wax is gonna be here and hopefully it won't jam the CNC. So far it hasn't. 
the CNC might look much worse right now, but I don't care because I won't have to clean the wax off my table. I want to test the main function of this machine first and then I can worry about the details like aesthetics. I haven't worked on this project for two months, so I was just gonna check the code, but then I decided not to. You might call it laziness, I call it trusting my past self. The workpiece is gonna have the same dimensions, so everything should work out the same. For the wax, I'm just using some old candles and I'm gonna melt them with my new soldering station outside because I don't want to pose any fire hazard. If this spills, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Other than the spillage, the mold worked perfectly. It was easy to take out the wax and the wax was even quite square because I had reinforced the mold. I even managed to not cut myself while installing the razor blade. I then clamped the workpiece into the new vise and I was ready to machine the part. Ok, now I can start facing the top. I first moved the tool so it touched the workpiece and then I pressed the facing button. What the fuck? Nothing happened because I forgot to zero out the coordinates. So after scratching my head I pressed the set zero button and the facing button again and it started machining. After facing the top I could finally run the main code which creates the gecko skin pattern. I wasn't sure how well it was gonna machine, so I divided the workpiece into four parts. The first part is just the normal gecko skin pattern, the second part scales it by two, the third part scales it by five, and the last part makes the pattern ten times bigger. I did this because I thought that the bigger pattern would probably be easier to machine. You can hear the stepper motors change directions quicker as it machines the smallest pattern. Although I'm not sure if my neighbors find it as interesting as I do. The sheet not only worked, but it didn't even get jammed up, probably because of the tight tolerances of the screw and the bearings. I took the workpiece out, shook off the wax chips, and then I looked at it under a microscope. This doesn't look the best. I think the wax just isn't strong enough, or the machining was poor. Despite the poor results, I decided to give it a try. So I mixed the silicone and I poured it onto the wax. I wait for it to solidify and then I was left with a piece of gecko skin. As expected, the gecko skin doesn't really work. The machining obviously didn't went well. That could be because the wax doesn't have the right properties. Or the feeds and speeds weren't right. Or the pattern is just wrong. So I'm gonna do some more research, I'm gonna play with these settings and hopefully I'll have a working gecko skin by the next video.